In today's video, I want to talk about macros in C. I think they are a very neat feature and they give you a lot of flexibility that you don't otherwise get in other languages, right? So I know I've talked about them in previous videos, you can check out up top, but I want to create a more, com more complex macro in this video and I'll show you what the power of macros actually is, all right? So to get started, let's set a goal. First, I want to make a function that simply prints out the value of a variable, right? I want it to be parameterized. So to do this, simply say hashtag define, and then let's give it a name, something like print var, right? Simple enough. And to give them parameters is the same as giving uh, parameters to functions, right? You just say in parentheses, you just give a name to whatever parameter you want. In this case, I want X, but not just uh, lowercase X. I want uppercase X. Why? Because that's usually the convention. The convention is to actually have uppercase um, parameter names inside macros in C. It's, it's uh, a little bit easier to read, all right? And well, simple enough, let's just print out our variable here. So I'm gonna print F and I'll say, well, value is, and I'm gonna just uh, pretend this variable is just a 32-bit signed integer. So just gonna say percent %d in this case. Um, all right, and just gonna pass in the x simply like so, just like any other variable. All right, so this looks oddly familiar, like any other function in C, right? It doesn't look any different than a function, but it's a macro. And to use it, well, what we have to do is pretty simple. We can just say int a equals, let's say three, and print var of a. And if I try to run this, you'll notice that we get value is three, which is the expected result. Basically, what happened here is we, is our preprocessor actually copied print f over to here and replaced x with an a. And what do you know? We get print f value is percent %d and then comma a, simple enough. I also want to print the address of this variable. So to, to print an address, well, what we have to do is simply say, like with any other variable, we just simply say ampersand and the variable itself. I'm going to say ampersand x. And inside our format string, we're just going to say value is percent %d at um, address, and if you watch the printf tips video, which you can check up top, you can simply print a pointer or, or pointer the address using percent %p, right? Simple enough. And if I try to run this now, you'll notice that we also get the value is free at address, whatever that address is, right? It's a 64 bit address. All right. So now you say, well, what's the difference then? So you have here a function sort of, right? I mean, I can make a function like this, right? It's pretty simple for me. That's, that's not much different, right? But what if I told you that you can actually print the name of the variable you pass in, right? Like the actual name that you pass in from the parameter, like from the caller function from right here. <laughs> yes, you can actually do this. And to do it, it's actually fairly simple. All you have to do is say, let's say instead of value, we're going to say whatever the variable name is. So we're going to say a is five. That's what we want as an end result. To do this, well, we can simply say x, but we have to prefix it with a hashtag that says, okay, take x, whatever that is, and just kind of give me the string of it, right? And to concatenate strings, all we have to do is if we have two literal strings, right, with double quotes, both of them, you would simply put them right next to each other and they would actually automatically concatenate. In our case, though, what we want is actually concatenate this, which is actually a literal string, and simply add in a double quote here. And if I try to run this, actually, you'll notice that we get the result a is free at whatever address. So we got the actual, the actual variable name that we passed through here, which is absolutely amazing. This is something that is not doable with normal functions. You wouldn't be able to do this, right? Unless you actually give it the name yourself as a string. 
Another thing to better define them, what you have to do is simply uh, to have an enter here so that you can, well, read it better, right? You have here the definition or like the signature of it and then the actual main body. All you have to do is hit enter and I will notice that that's not green anymore. So I have to add a uh, backslash right in here at the end of the line. And you can do this as many times as you want to get as many lines as you want if you have multiple lines on the same uh, macro. So in this case, it's just one and it looks pretty nice, I think. Now you can kind of make sense of it. So that's all nice and fancy, but what happens if I pass in a number here? Like what's gonna happen if I just say five here? Well, if I run this, you'll notice that we get a compiler error that says, note, in expansion of macro print var. So when they tried to actually copy and paste this in here, right, just like so, when replacing five in every single place, so it replaced five here, that was nice. It replaced five on the left here and just kind of said, five like so, so that's okay. We know we can concatenate those strings, but when it tried to replace it here, it said, uh, well, you cannot get the address of five. Doesn't really make any sense to get the address of five. That's a literal, right? So the compiler gave us an error, but it was in this macro. So it's kind of, it's a little bit more uh, difficult to uh, find the issues. Now, one really neat trick that I want to share with you guys is a macro that I think is really, really useful. So let's say we have two integers, right? We have a and b is eight. And I want to, well, swap them. You know those, I'm sure you know the operations you have to do to actually swap them. But did you know that you can do it in one line? Yeah, <laughs> you can do it in one line and you can actually create a macro using that. Let me show you. If you try to do these operations, so if you say a, x or equals b x or equals a x or equals b and if you then print these so if i say print f right if i try to run this you'll notice that they got swapped now i'm not gonna go into the actual mathematics behind this but it really works and it's really nice as a macro so you can actually swap any sort of variables well, with the same type. Um, in this case, let's define it. So it's going to be pretty simple. Just say swap of A and B. Remember uppercase um, parameter names. And then just say A XOR equals B. And that's basically all there is to it. Right? So now all we have to do is just call our swap macro. So just say swap of A and B. And there you go. If you try to run this, you'll notice that we get uh, them swapped. Like this is a really, really useful fun uh, macro, I think. You can also use the addition and subtraction operations. I, I think I created it once and it was a, a bit longer than this one, but it's also doable inside a uh, one line macro, right? So I hope this has helped you. If you have any other questions related to, well, macros or C in general, or even other languages, like for example, JavaScript, uh, please leave them down below in the comments. I am really interested in more questions from you guys, as I need more and more ideas to create these videos. That would really help me a lot. And of course, it will also help you guys. All right, thanks for watching and see you guys next time.